Hey, what's up everybody? It's Flux with FluxWithIt.com and today we're going to check out something really awesome. This is the Keylab 49 producer pack from Arturia. Uh, I've been looking for a long time now to find a MIDI controller keyboard that's going to kind of answer my prayers as far as uh, build quality, as far as controllability, versatility, and uh, just not feeling like a cheap toy. I looked around at a lot of different controllers and I settled on the idea of a Keylab 49 and I'll explain to you why. Uh, first off, let's dive into what we've got with this package here. Obviously we have the Keylab 49 controller, but this is a hybrid product, it comes with software that works uh, intuitively right along with the controller. Now, normally uh, it would be the Keylab 49 with the Keylab software, okay? This package comes with Keylab 49, comes with the Keylab software, which is like 5,000 preset sounds of Arturia products, which is pretty awesome, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But it also comes with the full version of Mini-V, which is the Arturia Mini Moog uh, emulation, and it also comes with Bitwig. Now, this is the full version of Bitwig Suite. This is not a... Um, a stripped down version or anything like that. So uh, by picking this up, you also get a complete DAW right along with it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Bitwig is a very new uh, doll that's coming out and uh, definitely has some really useful features. So we'll check that out as well. And uh, let's dive right into what this product has. Okay, so here we are with the hardware. This is the Keylab 49, and I have it just loaded inside of Machine uh, with, the, with the Analog Lab software. And Analog Lab software gives you roughly 5,000 presets from the Arturia V collection, and it automatically has everything mapped out, so everything works right away with these controls. Uh, so the dedicated knobs up here, you know, with their... With their um, parameters written below it they work right away to it so it will actually function just like a hardware synth in that respect you really get that that this is an instrument feel from this because you know you've got the metal build you know you've got these you know wood looking ends on here you've got everything is just laid out in a very immediate usable way which is great the left hand side here we've got our volume knob and then in this black area this is where we do all of our uh, programming and scrolling. So if we look at the Keylab 49 and the, R the uh, Analog Lab software, you can see that we have our presets along the left-hand side, and that corresponds to this preset knob. So I can scroll right through and dial in whatever preset I want right from the hardware controller. I can also select through categories and the knobs push in to click so that you can actually select everything without using a mouse at all. So if I wanted to say grab a CS80 and let's say I wanted it to be a pad and I want it to have a complex character about it, I can now scroll through here and I can see these complex CS80 pads. So if I grab one, I could just And maybe I, I like it, uh, but maybe I don't want to have a CS80 on that one. I can scroll back and let's say I just remove the CS80 parameter on here. And let's say I wanted a Profit 5 uh, complex pad instead. I click that and now I have Profit 5s up in here and I can select between those. So very useful for scrolling through the software. Uh, moving on from this section here, down below we have our octave section. As you press the octave buttons, they'll start to flash blue. And the faster they flash, the further out from center you are. So you'll see that I have up flashing and then it's flashing faster, faster. Okay, and then I can do the same going down. Okay. 
Pitch and mod wheels are fairly standard affair, but they do have a very smooth action to them. So they don't um, they don't stick and they don't have any kind of like rough spots on them, which is nice. Um, they're not the biggest in the world, but they're also not you know small. They have they do have an indent on them in the middle, so that you can kind of know where your hand is. I prefer that to just using touch strips or anything uh, without a tactile feedback, because I want to know where my hand is without having to look at it. So that's pretty nice. Up top here we have our bank buttons and we have 10 knobs. So we have two banks of 10 knobs that we can get to. Underneath the knobs you'll see that parameters are written out and those correspond to what's already auto mapped in the software for the analog lab. Uh, the buttons down below here, everything can be assignable. So you can set this up to do whatever you like on it. We have transport controls over here. Everything has a backlit LED so that when you press it, if you're up on stage or in a dark studio, you can see exactly what you're dealing with. You even have a loop button on here, which is quite nice. Then we have our nine faders. The nine faders feel very smooth. They're, they're tight. They're not, uh, they don't feel really flimsy or loose, which is nice. Um, the knobs, in my opinion, are an improvement over the previous generation. Uh, they don't have any um, notches in them, so they're very smooth when you turn them. I, I personally don't like the notched knobs when I'm trying to turn a filter, so that's very useful. Along the right-hand side, we have our pads. Now, the pads on this are auto set up to be uh, cords, and you can access that through the Analog Lab software. So if I pull this over, you'll see the cords, the cords that are set on the pads are right here. And you can easily just click on them and decide what you want. So let's say I wanted this to be a D2. And this next pad, let's say I wanted it to be, mm, we'll go up here, C sharp 2. This next one, let's say we want an F4. So you can select your pads and you can see on the software now i'm actually here let's uh let's grab a, a sound that's a little bit more immediate with a sharper attack and we'll take this away and we'll do uh let's go ahead and do an organ sound and just clicking in again i'm just clicking in on on the knob there to select it so now, so as I'm pressing a pad, you'll see it lights up in the software and I can just decide whatever I want it to be. Now you can select your uh, note range of the chord, you know, the key of the chord, and then below that you can select the style. So let's say I want this to be, um, let's go with, where am I at here? Uh, we'll do a C4, okay? And you can just easily assign your chords that way. I would have liked it to also be MIDI um, so that I could just send it out to whatever software in that way, but it's very useful for if you're doing a performance setup. Now, one of the great things about this keyboard is that you can edit everything right from the keyboard. And again, the buttons have a fantastic like tactile feedback, like the click, it feels like a hardware synth. It's got that nice metal body, so it doesn't feel plasticky or cheap. Um, you know, the keys have a very light synth feel to them. Uh, I know some people like a heavier synth feel, some people like a lighter synth feel, so that can be, um, that's up to your personal preference, but the, this key bed is, it's similar to the Mini Brute key bed, but it feels just a little bit tighter fit and finish to me. Uh, so if I hit the edit button, I can go in here and I can change my, my program change, I can do recalls, you know, I can store presets, I can change my global settings, I've got velocity curves, I can change between what style modes I'm in, MIDI channels, CCs, maximum and minimum information on here. You can also go in between sound and multi-mode, and this again gets back to your, uh, your Analog Lab software, and when you're in multi-modes, you can set up splits, you can layer synthesizers together, uh, you can do all sorts of fun things and, and set up macros and all that great stuff. So 
it's actually really, really powerful as a stage performance tool or as a studio um, sketch work area. You can also uh, dive into the software and you'll see that you have effects sends in here as well. Uh, we can scroll down here. You can assign parts. You can, you know, set up lots of different chains. Very, very powerful for doing that. You also have the option of going into live mode. And when you're in live mode, you can set up a preset string of presets so that um, let's say you have a set list and you need to jump between different presets for that set list. It's very easy to just drag a preset in here. You just drag it on. And let's, uh, let's do this. And we can just get right into it and just set up whatever preset chains you want and then you can easily select between them. Very easy to jump between things and just set up uh, you know set up your multis and then of course you can save them and recall them so that's very nice. Uh, you can hide the keyboard so that you just have the knobs laying out here, which is very useful if you want to see more of the screen. You can get into your preferences over here. You have your MIDI options. Just a very well thought out software, to be quite honest with you. You have your CPU meter up top here. You can see that, you know, I'm not using hardly any CPU. I'm on a 2013 uh, Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, just very well laid out. Now, You'll notice on mine, I have these colored stickers on here. And I'm going to jump into Bitwig so that I can show you what that's all about. Okay, so now we have Bitwig loaded up. And one of the great things about Bitwig is that it autom automatically completely integrated with the KeyLab 49. So they've gone ahead and mapped everything out for you so that there's no guesswork. You can use your transport control. You can set your loop range right on here. You can go ahead and you know, use your transport. That works perfectly without doing any setup. You can select between a Arturia mode, which allows you to control the Arturia plugins. You can go into your Bitwig mix mode, which allows these to be track faders. You got pan over here. Everything is automatically assigned. Another great thing is these last knobs over here allow you to scroll through and I can scroll through my tracks right here. And then I can also uh, dig right into uh, presets and whatnot. Now let's go ahead and if I just load up a synth here, you can see that if I touch a knob, you're going to pull up a macro. And here is a pan. I'm in mix mode. Let me go back to sound mode. Now you'll see that I have macro set up. And of course I can say right click. I could learn a controller and you'll see how it turns red. Let's grab this one and I'll hit learn. And you'll see it turns orange, and those correspond directly to the colors that are on the controller. So that it takes the guesswork out of what controller did you assign. Uh, just makes it very, very fast, very, very intuitive to know what you have mapped out. The stickers come with the KeyLab 49 so that you can quickly and easily uh, put them on there and just know exactly where everything is. Uh, you can lay them out however you want and you know, go from there. Very, very easy. Another great thing about this is if we go into uh, our options here, our file setting, and then uh, preferences, if you select the little question mark here, it will actually pull up what the auto mapping is. So you can dive right in and know exactly where everything is pre-mapped. They've been updating Bitwig nonstop. Every time I seem to load up Bitwig, it seems to, to have an update, so they're constantly adding features, and it seems to be a very powerful DAW. Great for just setting up beats and, and getting to work. I really enjoy that aspect of it. So, all in all, I've been very pleased with the KeyLab 49. After spending about two months with this keyboard now, I can say that it's been holding up very well. I've put it through its paces. It's not given me any problems whatsoever. I've been very happy with it. Uh, some things that I would have liked uh, improved, dynamic response on the pads could be better. It's usable, uh, but in order to get full velocity on them, you, you have to really hit them. You know, it, it, I, I would like to see a little bit more dynamic response on there. And that may be something that can be improved with firmware or with software. 
Uh, but for just simple drumming, works fine. For triggering things, it works great. Uh, for mapping things too, excellent. So all in all, I've been very pleased with it. I would highly recommend it. Uh, the price point is ridiculous considering all the software that you get along with it and the build quality. So I highly recommend it. This is Flux of FluxWithIt.com. Peace.